All right, finally, last and probably least, let's talk about prospect and configuration, scoring, and buying intent. So the reason why these are all at the bottom, in my opinion, is that they're the least kind of well thought out or actionable, um, with the exception of this prospecting configuration. So if you are a company that is reaching out to European contacts, I don't have to tell you this, but I do actually, uh, please stay compliant with GDPR, right? Paul gives you a nice option here of um, either cutting off all prospecting of, of EU contacts, um, the sending of emails to those contacts, or the tracking of emails to people in the EU. Now, I have to be honest with you guys, myself, I'm not really in this world that much. I'm usually dealing with US clients, so um, I don't have the best advice. I would say that being safe is always better than being sorry, so I think that this forbid the prospecting of people in the EU, right? Cuts off the the uh, the next two there. Um, Going to leave this up to you and your teams. I will say that if this is relevant to you, this is the most important thing that you're going to uh, kind of deal with just to make sure that, you know, nothing catastrophic happens. And, and I think we've all heard, you know, those stories and, and how poorly that can go. So uh, with that said, stay on top of the prospecting configuration. This is super relevant to GDPR. Um, but from there, I think that this is all pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to move over to the scoring. Um, now, scoring, this is <clears throat> this is the, the feature of Apollo that I'm most frustrated with because they did come out with this around four years ago, right? So they had this idea. It's a good idea. And you can see here, right? Like the scoring system is pretty simple. It's composed of, hey, if I have X, that equals this many points, right? So if I have a company that has 250 employees and I'm talking with the CMO, right? Both of those have a point value and they're located in the US. That's another point value and they raised X amount of dollars, right? So you could basically set a threshold and say, hey, out of my top 50 accounts, right? Which ones are the most potentially warm for me right now, right? Now, why do I say warm? Because you can go into behavioral filters as well. Uh, you can also go into like hiring um, hiring personas, right? So you could say, hey, if somebody's hiring X number of marketing managers and they are a company of 500 employees that are in the US that are SaaS and their keywords contain blah, 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 right? That equals this many points. Um, so I'm gonna prioritize the companies obviously with the most amount of points, right? You could also use this as a um, exclusion tool, right? So you could say, hey, I think that this group of 100 is a good list of accounts, but I'm dealing with these people at those accounts. And when I put that into the system, the score comes out to be an 80 and our threshold is 100, right? So you can also use it that way. I would just recommend being very cautious here. I hate when uh, um, my customers are excluding too much. Right. I think a scoring system like this tends to promote that outcome indirectly and not on purpose. Right. So just stay diligent here. This is a newer SDR kind of or pre sales kind of flow uh, and is usually developed on a company level. So I think my advice here would be A, it works, but B, word of caution. Um, I don't use this with many clients. I use it with one in particular only because they really, really, um, you know, push for it. So, um, A, it works. All the things are there. B, you better be really, really good at understanding the scoring and what's important to your company or else you're going to exclude a ton of valuable potential business from your outreach. Okay, cool. Um, buying intent. Now, this is a newer idea on the Apollo side, but obviously has been around for a bit. Now, with buying intent, you can go ahead and say, hey, show me people that are in, uh, that are searching for, I don't know, app monetization, uh, A-B testing, CMS, so on and so forth, right? And this will find all of the individuals that you are including in this list of filters, right? So what does buy intent mean? Let's take a step back there, right? So buy intent is all about what are the individuals of that 
company looking for online, right? I don't think I need to explain, but I will why this is helpful, right? If you have an account that is a, let's just say a translation management software, right? And they're looking for a new project management tool, right? And if they are, you would imagine that the head of product, the director of product, and the director of product management are all going to be kind of looking for that tool and doing a little bit of due diligence so that when they get on their meeting next week and they have to talk about what they found, they have things to talk about, right? So they're looking at things like monday.com, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Apollo is able to tell us, hey, a higher proportion of people from this account than we would expect are searching for X topic, right? So where is this useful? Obviously, this is the future, right? This is where everything is going, in my opinion, in terms of live search and understanding exactly what the buyer intent is. Um, the technology behind this is still relatively new. So I would say just a uh, little bit of caution, but I would dive into this and, and see if it works for you. Okay. Um, so with that said, we're going to stop our uh, intro slash configuration session here. And we're going to get into a little bit more fun stuff. Next, we're going to talk about um, doing prospect searches and finding net new leads. Cool. That's when it gets really exciting. So I'll see you there.